in a place called uh, Preston, Lancashire County, England. Um, he lived there for a total of four whopping years. And at the ripe old age of four, his family, who was, which was very poor, they split up. Half of them stayed in Preston, and the other half moved to a place called Kilwinning in Scotland, where Robert Burns um, used to live or grew up. He's a real famous um, Scottish poet that you guys probably haven't heard of yet, but uh, <clears throat> and might not ever. But uh, um, and then once again, uh, his family, like I said, was poor. And uh, and and um, a little later on, around the age of ten or twelve, I don't exactly know when, um, he moved to Glasgow. And that's where he finished his primary education and even gave university a try. But after a year or so, he resigned his position at university. Isn't that a nice way of saying, you know, I just don't have it, <laughs> you know. But uh, um, he, uh, so he resigned his position at university and he went to work for a bank, which is important because when he finally immigrated to Canada, um, he ended up working for a bank, which is the reason why he ended up in this part of the world and writing about it. And, uh, but also, one of the other things that Mr. Service was, I mean, he was probably fascinated with many, many things as a young man and a boy, but he was also um, in love with the North American West. Um, he, he wrote two um, biographies of himself, and in the first one he mentions uh, several times that, that he loved the dime store novels as a young boy that was popular back then, right? And he also, um, also grew up with the age of uh, um, Remington's uh, um, etchings and engravings and stuff like that of the great North American landscapes, right? So he thought he'd be a pretty good cowboy. But you guys tell me, if you... And you decide to immigrate to Canada. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, maybe I'm going to be a cowboy. How many of you are going to move to Vancouver Island to start your career off? <laughs> right? That's where Mr. Service headed for. Right? And, and he stayed there. Um, he used the, the Victoria... Uh, Vancouver area as a base of operations up until 1904. He wasn't up here like a lot of people think during the gold rush, right? He didn't get up here until eight years after discovery and six years after the last great gold rush started to peter out and it moved to places like Atlin in um, British Columbia, which is just 40 air miles to the east of us. And then in 1900, it moved downriver to Nome, right? <clears throat> and, uh, but in 1904, Mr. Service, was um, he turned 30. Oh, and here's something. I make this offer to everybody. I've been doing Robert Service shows here in Skagway now for 25 years. And, the, and for 23 years, January 19th is his birthday. And um, on January 19th in, in Whitehorse, there's a big Robert Service birthday party. Right? And as far as I know, I'm the only Yank that's invited to it, right? You know, which is an honor. And, uh, and I make this offer to everybody because my, my partner, she doesn't like Robert Service. And um, she never goes to these things with me. But I have an open invitation for two, right? So I make this offer to all of you here. If any of you happen to be in Skagway on January 19th and want to go to Robert Service's birthday party in Whitehorse, you can go as my guest, and, and you will learn what it's like to experience 40 to 50 below. Right? You know, that's just a lure I'm throwing out there, right? You know? So anyway, um, but anyway, Robert Service, he lived in Whitehorse from 1904 to 1907, and the Canadian, what is now known as the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, transferred him to Dawson City in 1907. And by then, he'd already written The Cremation of Sam McGee, The Shooting of Dan McGrew, Spell of the Yukon. And so some of his most famous and popular pieces um, were written while he lived in Whitehorse. And then in 07, he moved to Dawson. And by 09, he was fairly wealthy from, uh, from those three poems that I just mentioned and was, was able to retire from the bank and start living off of his royalties for the rest of his life. And he left the Yukon never to return in 1912. And I'm, the stuff that you hear from me tonight, unless we end up on some um, strange tangents and uh, I start doing other things, uh, it's all going to be focused on the era of uh, the time that he was here in the north, in the Yukon Territory. So... <clears throat>